says we went to under attack. I think inspiration comes from everything, everything that you look at. Looking at other things around you, including other people's work, but actually looking at it in a way that maybe they didn't look at it before, or the, the original idea wasn't intended to give off that message, sort of bounces your brain around and gives you a serendipity, something new, something you know, really kind of recycling in some ways. I don't ever sit down and not know what to draw. I might sit down and say, which thing am I going to draw next? My biggest influence from my childhood would have been my uncle, John Gearing. He worked on the Beano and the Dandy. I knew he drew, but I don't know, I kind of imagined he had a real job as well, you know. I think as soon as I realised that what he did was sit in a studio and draw, and that's what you could do, you know, it wasn't just like a hobby, because I thought he was like me, you know, you just draw in your spare time. So even from a very early age, I was inspired to draw. The idea of sitting in a, an office, a studio, on your own, just being left to draw. <laughs> Just everything you ever wanted to do. I don't know what I would do if I, if I just couldn't draw all the time. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. I hope other illustrators would agree with me that it's quite easy to make a pretty picture. What's difficult is, is getting that message underlying that pretty picture. You have to work on two levels. You, you have to have a very simple, clean idea that's instantly recognisable, but on closer inspection there's a lot more going on. Problem solving, I think that's what really does it for me trying to find a way to make something work to the best it can. I find my work uh, is quite whimsical, I think, but it, and it's, it's not very serious. I do preschool stuff and uh, a lot of adult stuff as well, not tits and arson. But, um, <laughs> sorry, it's not that again. <laughs> Grown-up stuff. <laughs>